G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well it's Sunday here in Australia, Sunday evening, sort of afternoon and obviously sort of Sunday morning, Saturday night uh, in other parts of the world and the cryptocurrency market is going absolutely ballistic. The market cap is now $880 billion. It has not actually reached it's gone through its old market cap uh its old all-time high now i thought it was 880 billion but we go over here it was actually 800 sort of 52 billion dollars so we are 30 billion dollars through its all-time high now this has me a little bit worried but also super excited at the same time i'm not sure which one uh, is you know the right one to sort of follow but what I thought is once we got to the market cap uh, all-time high that we might reject from it. Well, we haven't. We've just pushed straight through it. So we are $30 billion over the market cap. Now, that is what makes me think that we didn't get the rejection from it. This still could be a bit of a fake out that maybe we are really about to see the start of something crazy. And, you know, again, we're all, ex or we're not all, but at least most of us are probably expecting uh, a good pullback. Maybe it's not going to happen for much, much, uh, till much, much later. Again, 50, 70, 80, 100,000, who knows at the moment. But this is what I wanted to focus on first. So the market cap, the all-time high has, has been broken. So again, you usually get some rejections at around about there, or it goes up a little bit and then comes back at back and reconsolidates around that old sort of resistance, uh, support, whatever. So we'll have to wait and see. We could go through a bit and then reject fairly hard and come back down uh, and find some support here at, again, that sort of $850 billion mark. But we'll have to wait and see. Look, we go over here. Again, $880 billion, It's up 12%. And this is over a weekend. There's a massive CME gap happening uh, on Bitcoin at the moment. I think it's $4,000 CME gap or something like that. And again, normally I'd be really worried that we're going to come back and uh you know correct but now that i'm so excited this is probably exactly why we will it's so hard to work these markets out sometimes again i thought we would have had uh bigger corrections by now but i have said a number of times that i thought a decent correction would have happened somewhere between bitcoin being at twenty five thousand and thirty five thousand. we are very close to thirty five thousand right now so uh I'm not that scared that I haven't uh, bought some things. I have, and we're going to speak about that very soon. But I am still cautious enough that I haven't gone and thrown too much money in at the moment because I would not be surprised if we didn't get a hefty correction. And again, maybe it even happens at sort of you know forty thousand or fifty thousand, but a forty fifty percent correction from there still brings us down fairly low back into the twenty thousand. So I've always got money on the side, and really that is for if it ever really really dips, and then after that I'm sort of dollar cost averaging. But things are super exciting. Now look at the gas prices uh, of ETH at the moment. They are soaring. So back up into triple digits. That's really, uh, yeah, unfortunate for anyone who's trying to do anything on a smart contract that doesn't have some kind of layer two solution. Uh, yeah, uh, and this really hurts particularly when I uh, am staking my KNC. I need to do some more research and find out if there's a cheaper way to do it because basically all the rewards I'm getting uh, staking my uh, Kyber network are just being chewed up by gas fees a lot of the time. Now, Bitcoin dominance, it has gone over that 70%. I actually think this is going to grow. I think, it is, I think it's going to uh, buck the trend uh, and climb higher. I don't think the alts, there's too much uh, skepticism about alts at the moment with regulation and all the rest of it. I think the Bitcoin dominance could rise to possibly up to 90%. Uh, look, and you know, once there's some more clarity and Bitcoin's really kind of sort of leveled out a bit, I think the altcoin season is going to come much later and before we see this Bitcoin dominance drop. Uh, it, it's hard to say. I really never thought we would get back to this kind of 70, 75% range all that easily. And I thought if we were going to do it, it would have happened earlier. And once Bitcoin broke its old all-time high, which was 20,000, uh, it would severely drop. But it's just on a rocket ship at the moment. And I actually think uh, it will likely get higher. Now, we still need to be careful. There could be a big correction coming. Uh, 
And look, I'm 100% sure at some stage there will be a significant correction coming. Uh, I'm just not sure when it's going to happen anymore. I honestly cannot predict these markets at the moment. And it's hard to predict markets that are in price discovery because it's, it's just a guessing game. No one truly knows what's going to happen. We're all guessing. We don't have any past history to go by. So yeah, watch this space again. $880 billion. We are now higher than what we were in 2017. And we don't have the retail FOMO yet. They're not even here yet. Uh, and even the real big institutional FOMO is not here yet. It's just these big early adopters. You know, again, uh, you know, Grayscale, Sky Ridge, uh, you know, PayPal, uh, all of those, they will be considered the true early uh, institutional adopters. So I really, I can't fathom what price Bitcoin is going to get to by the end of it. I mean, we're just at the start of the year and it's 30, basically, there we go, it's 34,000 now. It's going close to 35,000. Uh, it's not incomprehensible to think that this could still sort of, you know, four or five X from here. Uh, I'm not saying it will, but at the moment, uh, it is just absolutely soaring. And again, we still haven't got the real institutional FOMO yet. They're not going to come until Bitcoin uh, itself has basically a market cap of around a trillion dollars. So we're still a ways off that. And then the retail FOMO and all that. All right, let's have a look. 14%, let's round it up, 15% in 24 hours. That is cracking for Bitcoin. 30% uh, in seven days, basically, for Bitcoin. Now, it is this that makes me worried that a correction is probably coming. This is super exuberance, but we, we just can't guarantee. This still could be the start of something huge. And simply because the market cap has just reached its all-time high and it didn't reject off it, it's pushed through it and continues to grow. So this could really be the start of a massive parabolic move for the entire market. Bitcoin's going to lead the way. Uh, altcoins and that will have their time. And look, they're still doing all right now. It's not like they're not. It's just Bitcoin's leading the way. All right, let's have a look. 24 hours. Who's done the best? Well, there we go. Dogecoin. Good Lord. Uh, Elon Musk has put some... Uh, some tweets out about it uh, and TikTok are going and it is absolutely smashing. I doubled my money on Dogecoin earlier and then just forgot about it, not remembering that it has these massive pumps uh, and it's killed me. Now, Verge, just this morning, I was cleaning out my uh, portfolio with my underperformers. Verge had hardly done anything. It had been down 30% and I got back to finally in profit at 2%. And so I sold all my Verge, cashed it in. And I kid you not, within 20 minutes of cashing my Verge in, it pumps 17%. <laughs> it is always the way. My Digibyte, the same thing. I cashed in my Digibyte this morning uh, and it's pumped. Uh, you know, what can you do? You can't pick them all. Uh, and I did put a tweet out earlier that I need to remind myself it's the strong hands that will win, you know. Yes, you can be down 30%, but then, you know, you just got to simply hold and generally you're going to, you know, be up. Now, this 25% here might have just got me to even with Digibyte because I was down uh, by quite a lot. So uh, I don't know where my Digibyte would be now because obviously I sold it. Uh, but again, this didn't all just happen uh, right after I bought it. But yeah, perfect example. No one can get it right all the time. Uh, and, you know, these are really hurting. But again, Anyone in Doge, I would be taking profits. I'm not saying this can't go higher. We are quite likely at the start of a parabolic move. Uh, but again, we could have a massive correction. It's hard to know. But this could pump higher. But take profits. At 78% in 24 hours, you should be able to basically take all your money back. Uh, you know, and famous last words are, you know, it's easy to say that uh, when you're not in it, it's not happening to you. And when you're in it, you're like, no, it's going to go more. But yeah, for Dogecoin, I'd possibly consider taking some profits. But then again, look, this could go a lot higher. This could be the start of something truly unbelievable. But that's what has me, you know, at least somewhat cautious that a big correction might not be too far away. Things are just so crazy at the moment. But again, uh, who knows? And none of what I say is financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. What about losses? Has anyone lost? 
All right, there has been some losses. So the graph continues to go down, just really sliding. It had such a good pump. It was always going to happen. NEM, same thing. It had a good pump a while ago, so it's just retracing. So not everything's winning. Zillica, I mean, Zillica was on such a run. It's done really well this year, so of course it's going to retrace. Uh, and again, this doesn't mean these projects are dead. This simply means that, you know, a correction is coming. Like here we can see Algorand, it had a mad pump. And so, of course, there's a correction and it may lose even more of it. Stella XRP, of course, they're going to go down. There's just too much FUD at the moment. Uh, and I've got a little story on XRP shortly. But generally, the losses aren't too bad, at least in comparison to the, uh, the gains. The gains have been unbelievable. Now, again, I did make a couple of buys, so I want to go over here to have a look at uh, Utrust. Now, this just looked too good. You look at this. Now, this is over months, uh, Utrust at the moment. This here, this looks like the pump, the pullback, and now this is just a consolidation right here. I think this looked too good to kind of pass up, uh, so I chucked a couple of dollars in. Now, not a whole lot, and again, this is just uh, since July. If we want to go all the way back to here, we can see where Utrust has been before. So Utrust has been over a dollar. And we can see this is when it really pumped up, sold off, had its pump like everything else did, sold off. This is a massive accumulation phase here. And then it pumped up. And this is what we were looking at before, sold off. And now this to me just looks like accumulation. So uh, yeah, got myself some uh, Utrust. Heard a lot about the project and a lot of what they're doing. Uh, very interesting about helping with payments and all the rest of it. Uh, and, you know, making it easy uh, for a retail adoption and all the rest of it. So have a look into Utrust. But uh, I, I made a buy on this. And look, we'll wait and see whether it pays off. Uh, it may not. Again, there could be a massive correction in the market. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> I will have, you know, basically been, you know, sort of burnt not burnt exactly but you know that's the way it is and again i didn't put everything i own into this i probably put it'll be less than one percent i reckon it's probably half a percent of my total portfolio maybe even less than that went into this it literally was not that much but it just looked like too good an opportunity uh to pass up on the dollar value anyway don't get me wrong i think bitcoin's likely going to outperform it but you know a lot of things are starting to pump at the moment and you trust hasn't pumped for a while so i just thought i better get in uh, and i could uh, make some really good gains now snx against uh btc sorry here we go i spoke about this a while ago so i got into it now the dollar value for snx so i suppose we should look at that first it's been doing fine so again we had this big pump here and then it started to sell off this is against the us dollar and again i got back into it at around about sort of here now this is on the daily uh, and it pumped up and then it started to fall back and look it's just been kind of you know up and down up and down up and down excuse me so on the dollar value it's doing fine and what we can see here is it's basically coming back and retesting its old all-time high this could be super bullish for uh, synthetics network so again I, I built a position I may uh, wait until I see again you know the weekend's not over yet so we could have a bit of a correction uh, come sort of Sunday uh, early sort of Monday morning before the, all the markets open up again we may not who knows but this just looked pretty good again my dollar value I'm, I'm doing just fine with synthetics network but let's go over and have a look at Bitcoin so we can see again this is still sort of similar it had its big pump and then it came back and corrected. And again, this is where I sort of got in here uh, against BTC. So I was like, yep. And then it fell down. I got a little bit worried. It broke out. And I thought, all right, sweet. But it was a fake out. It fell underneath. And then it broke out. And now it's just kind of chopping sideways. But this to me here, this feels like an accumulation phase again. So this is just where it's building. So again, something kind of like this. And again, this is against Bitcoin. Uh, and look, this could last for months and months and months. I don't think it will. It could last for weeks. It could last for days. I mean, this is the daily chart already. So what are we going here? Let's start since back here. Actually, let's start from back here because this is roughly sort of the bottom. So since the 7th of November, it's kind of been trading sideways um, against Bitcoin. Dollar value has been going up. So dollar value is fine. It's just against Bitcoin. Uh, it's really ranging 
It's not getting lower though. Uh, it's just kind of holding that baseline. It keeps kind of sort of bouncing, you know, roughly off around about here. Every time it gets down, it perks back up against Bitcoin. So it's holding its own. I just get the feeling like this might be an accumulation phase and it could, you know, be ready to, again, do something like this. And this is where it basically outpaces Bitcoin. Uh, when I got into uh, Synthetics Network, and again, it was back in sort of uh, March, I think I got the cheapest I got, it was about 84 cents or something. Uh, it has absolutely, well, it still has, but it out, it's outperformed Bitcoin. Uh, I only wish I had to put more in, and same with Aave. Uh, I wish I had to put more in Aave. They're probably my two best performers. Uh, again, nothing life-changing at the moment where I can retire or anything like that, but, uh, you know, talk about putting your money to good work. So again, when this was on its run, I mean, it was just crushing uh, Bitcoin. But now Bitcoin's got on a run. Synthetics Network has just been holding its own. Uh, and I am waiting to see uh, if it will, you know, start its next pump, but it could break down. So again, I didn't put, you know, everything into it. I just build a small position and I'll wait and see if it just continues to travel sideways. Uh, I'm just going to keep putting a little bit more in every, you know, couple of days, every couple of weeks, whatever it is, that whole dollar cost averaging. Because at the very least, synthetics, it holds its own against Bitcoin. This is, it had its correction. This is where it was losing against Bitcoin. Now it's started to solidify itself and fix itself up. So it's holding its own against Bitcoin. Could it fall over? Absolutely it could. Or it could be doing this, holding its own, holding its own, holding its own, maybe losing a little bit, and then boom, uh, makes its next move up. So again, nothing would I say is financial advice. You make your own mind, but this just looked like a pretty good setup. So again, I'll put some more money into Synthetics Network. Uh, looking at Aave, looking at Nexus Mutual, there's definitely some uh, nice projects out there that are looking pretty good, but please please be warned there could be a massive correction i mean the fever is high at the moment everyone's super excited including me you can tell by the way i'm talking uh, i'm super pumped this is usually when people get burnt but not always it could just be the start of something even more insane we'll have to wait and see hence why i always have cash sitting on the sidelines if there is a correction, I'm able to take advantage of that. And again, I'm more dollar cost averaging and I'm waiting for good setups. I've been burnt, uh, you know, by again, you know, like I bought Digibot at, uh, at a peak. I bought Matic at a peak. I haven't sold any Matic. I still believe in Matic, but it is definitely down. It's constantly been down about 20 to 30%. Uh, and, and I could sell out like I did, you know, with uh, Verge and Digibyte. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm more fundamentally positive on Matic, uh, and so I'm just simply going to hold, uh, and we'll wait and see what happens. I wasn't as sold on Digibyte and Verge, although again they've come back to bite me. And Verge is still doing things out there, and so is Digibyte. They have communities and all the rest of it. But again, so Synthetics Network was looking good, so I put some in. We'll have to wait and see. Again, this might be going down against Bitcoin, but it's just kind of ranging in and around here. But the US dollar value uh, is it continues to go up. You know, it might lose a few cents or a dollar or two here, but then it makes it up. So yeah, again, I'm not losing money. It's just maybe I would have been better off putting it in Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's been on such a run lately. We'll have to wait and see. Can it keep that up? Will it cool off? And will altcoins then really start to blow up? Or is there just a big correction coming where everything kind of dumps? So yeah, just when we get this exuberant, we need to be very, very careful. But again, if you're looking long term, four or five years down the track, and you've done your research on your project, hey, you sh you know, again, if you've done your research and you believe in the team and all the rest of it, then no matter what, you know, things just generally always go up in the longer term. So it depends on what your horizon is. This looks like uh, it could be a, a good swing trade if you want to swing trade it. Uh, or just, again, another good spot to accumulate and build an even bigger position or just build a position in Synthetics Network if you like it. All right, Bitcoin. So again, just have a look at this thing. This is absolutely crazy. It has just been running. You know, we had this correction. That was 17%. There's a little bit of a correction here. What was that correction? So not long after, we can go from here down to here. So over around about a week, it had a 12% correction. So, I mean, 
it's not like Bitcoin isn't having any corrections. It most certainly is having corrections. They are just oh so small. Um, the, the demand for it at the moment is just too large. I mean, OTC, you know, that's where Grayscale and PayPal and all that are just, you know, gobbling it up. So there is no OTC uh, Bitcoin really because uh, they're buying it all up. But even the, the Bitcoins on the exchanges are getting less and less. And look, you know, like Binance has its own mining setup. So they mine their own Bitcoin. So they don't have to buy it from someone to then sell it. They literally mine their own. So they will always have Bitcoin to sell. But even they've got less and less and less. And they don't sell all their Bitcoin when it's doing these kind of price runs. They hold uh, and, yeah, wait for better prices. But this is what I'm talking about. There has been very little correction here. So let's go over here. I mean, what was this kind of correction? So I mean, you know, 10% correction. So that's not too bad. And I mean, there was a bigger correction here. But, you know, counting the wicks generally, you know, I don't like to do it too much. But that's all we've really got to go by because there's hardly any candle bodies. This is just racing. And I mean, look at it, 34,000. Again, I did say that I said there could be a correction, or at least I think there will be a correction between 25 and 35,000. Let's go. Let's get to 35,000. So where are we? 35. All right. Let's start to have a look what happens. What's a 20% correction? Gets us back down to $26,000. So there you go, we could lose $6,000. What's a 30% correction? A 30% correction gets us back down to $24,000. That's from $35,000. No guarantees that's going to do it. Now let's go a 40% correction. All right, 40% correction from $35,000 brings us right back down to sort of $20,000. So it brings us back to our old all-time high. That is generally what would happen in a bull market. That would be a uh, a retest of an old uh, support level, and we can see there was uh, you know some resistance and some sort of support around here, around that twenty thousand dollar mark. So this is what I'm saying. Just beware. We could have something that brings us all the way back down to twenty thousand. I think it's highly unlikely. I just want everyone to know that. Uh, I think the buying pressure would just be too much. You know, PayPal, uh, you know, I mean, they're doing it OTC, but I, you know, I just think the buying pressure would be too much. I think we'll be lucky if it gets to 35,000 to push it back down to sort of just maybe 28,000. That I could possibly see. Uh, but even that, I think that's more unlikely. I think, you know, yeah. Things are just crazy. All right, last but not least. So XRP enthusiasts, they have put together um, uh, their own kind of lawsuit, you know, and getting their uh, little thing going and they've put it to the White House. So a long shot effort from the community hopes to solicit an official White House response. As the token price uh, prices plunge and Ripple prepares for court, a band of XRP enthusiasts have rallied around a petition that may force a White House statement on the recent SEC lawsuit alleging uh, Ripple conducted an unregistered securities uh, offering. So again, we've seen the price. Uh, you know, We'll have to wait and see whether I did the right thing or not. I'd literally sold XRP at the bottom when it got down to sort of 19 cents. <laughs> You know, what do you do? Again, the strong hands, you know, they generally do the best and I, I panic sold, so I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. Uh, it's currently sitting around 22, every now and then gets down to 21 cents. Uh, so, I, you know, yeah, again, we'll have to wait and see. But now they have put their petition forward to the White House uh, and they're trying to get some clarity a whole lot quicker. Look, uh, it has been considered a currency uh, in a couple of other places around the world, but yeah interesting times for xrp holders i didn't sell all my xrp i did hold on to a very small portion but yeah we'll just have to wait and see you know for anyone who's uh, in xrp i do hope this gets sorted sooner rather than later and look i would love for uh, uh, ripple to you know uh, get this sorted and whether they you know, just bow to the SEC and pay the fines or, you know, go through court, uh, whatever it is, whatever the result, and I do think they'll probably settle. 
Uh, I hope this gets sorted sooner, sooner rather than later because XRP will just miss out on this whole bull run. Uh, and that would be really unfortunate. Now, again, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there about this is all, you know, set up so the institutions can get it all back from the retail. And look, they've got most of it back from me at the moment. So, you know, again, I have a small bag and we'll wait and see uh, what sort of happens. And look, if XRP does go down a little bit, I am looking to buy back in. Uh, but again, I'm really more waiting for uh, the clarification if they settle. Again, if I end up having to buy XRP at, you know, 35, 45 cents and I sold it, you know, for 19 cents, then that's just the way it is. But I want that clarification before I'm going to uh, go back into something that could, you know, go down a whole lot further. Uh, time will tell. All right. That's it from me. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think XRP, uh, you know, are they going to settle? And do you think this petition that has been put forward to the White House is going to make any difference? Do you think that will have any clout and that maybe the White House will then, you know, pressure the SEC to hurry up and get this clarified? Or do you think, you know, this is going to just drag on for months and maybe even years? Uh, and again, that XRP... Uh, we'll miss this next bull run. Love to know your thoughts. All right, hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, hit all so you get all the updates that I'm bringing out new videos. I do new videos uh, pretty much every day. I've, I think I've only missed two days in months and months and months and uh, that's all been family related. You know, sometimes those things <laughs> get in the way and family's pretty important. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.